back at you with Weather for Weather Geeks on this Monday evening, the 23rd day of September. We just got done with a very, very toasty weekend. In fact, pretty good odds that that was our warmest weekend we'll have until sometime late next spring. 87 officially at the airport on Saturday. We did 86 on Sunday. Now, today was a more seasonable day. Yes, it was muggy today. Um, but the temperature today held in check by the clouds and a little bit of rain from time to time. We had 73 today, but notice we've had above average high temperatures now for almost two consecutive weeks. We haven't had a cooler than average high temperature since back on the uh, 9th. And that streak of above average high temperatures likely to continue for much of the rest of the week. We don't expect upper 80s any again anytime soon, but lots and lots of middle and upper 70s. Now, Certainly not drought-busting rains. We need a lot more than this. But over the last 24 hours at the airport, uh, we've registered a little under a tenth of an inch over towards Oil City, Franklin. A little over a quarter of an inch there, but some piddling amounts down towards I-70 from Wheeling over towards the Pittsburgh area. Some local rain gauges uh, down towards East Liverpool, a few hundreds. Downtown Youngstown a little bit better, about a quarter of an inch or so. Now, uh, in between our rain gauge network here, uh, we have uh, some radar estimates of up to 0.4, uh, half an inch even, from West Middlesex over towards Fredonia in Mercer County. Generally, that Route 62 corridor has been one of our wetter spots over the last 24 hours across the state line into Pennsylvania. Now, we're not adding much to those rain totals this evening. We've had drips and drabs of rain and drizzle from time to time today, and we had a little bit of that, especially during the uh, 4 and 5 o'clock hours late this afternoon, early this evening. Not going to be much over the next several hours across our area. Now, I do think that'll change as we head towards tomorrow morning. Um, shower chances will start increasing again, particularly after daybreak and towards 7, 8, 9 o'clock. I think a lot of us will get a little bit wet tomorrow morning. Um, outside chance of a rumble of thunder in this as well. Now, our forecast for Tuesday is a tricky one. Uh, one of the reasons is we are likely to have some showers first thing in the morning, and it's a little un certain as to how much clearing we can see as we head towards midday and into the afternoon. The reason why that's important, we actually have a pretty summer-like setup, um, midsummer-like setup, or even early summer um, for tomorrow with a pretty potent weather disturbance with a lot of wind energy aloft cruising through. At the surface, we have a warm front, which we'll be pushing in, and there's actually a fair amount of wind energy, including some wind shear aloft in this setup for tomorrow. And if we can tap into some instability, if we can get the sun out for a time, that will increase the chance for maybe a heavy, gusty storm before Tuesday afternoon is through. The day two outlook from the Storm Prediction Center highlights a level one risk of severe weather tomorrow, roughly from Youngstown on south and west. It's a level two slight risk in the yellow uh, coloring down across Kentucky. The overall severe weather risk, I think, is on the lower end tomorrow because of the, you know, perhaps lack of instability. A lot of wind shear instability may be lacking depending on if we get any midday clearing. It's interesting uh, with the setup tomorrow, even though the instability may be lacking, there's no shortage of wind direction and speed change as you go up through the atmosphere. We call that wind shear, of course. And so it makes sense that the Storm Predic Prediction Center did outline a 2% uh, tornado risk contour across a good chunk of north central Ohio, the panhandle of West Virginia, a few counties in southwestern PA as well. 2%, of course, is a low number, but it is late September. Our tornado climatology at this time of the year is not particularly high. Uh, this is not a prime uh, time of the year for tornadoes, that is for sure. So if you consider that our chance of a tornado on any random day in late September, climatologically speaking, is a fraction of 1%, way down there, 2% risk is, you know, noteworthy for tomorrow afternoon. Now, here's one model depiction of how things will go on Tuesday. Here's our advancing warm front. Uh, we start the day with a pretty good chance of, of sh some uh, showers, outside chance of thunder. Now, as we get into the midday hours, this is kind of the key part of the day. Clearing is more likely perhaps around and south of I-70. If we stay in the clouds and the stable air up here, that's going to decrease our chances for any sort of, you know, thunderstorm malfeasance <laughs> during the second half of the day. Um, but again, this is just one model depiction. As we get into the late afternoon, early evening, again, our window for any clearing might start to close. And, you know, the atmosphere may not be able to produce much more than another round of showers. This is one of those things that we're going to have to pay attention to over the next uh, 12 to 18 hours. If you have outdoor plans, or even if you don't have outdoor plans on Tuesday, and we want you to stay safe and weather aware, you know, check in with the latest forecasts on WFMJ Today tomorrow morning. I'll chime in on social media. 
during the first half of the day. And of course, I'll be in-house here in the studio in the afternoon along with Andrew. We'll keep you abreast of what is uh, transpiring. But nonetheless, this, the severe weather risk window will close pretty quickly in the evening as more stable air starts to take over. In fact, it won't rain much at all for our Tuesday night and into Wednesday morning. Showers might try to reemerge by Wednesday afternoon with still a kind of a moist flow or conveyor belt along our kind of decaying cold front. Some showers might uh, try to dampen us again Wednesday afternoon, perhaps early Wednesday evening. This front then kind of stalls out just to our east on Thursday, and it starts interacting with what I'm going to show you next, which is the tropical system down in the uh, Caribbean. And I think the end of the week, Thursday and Friday, this front stalls far enough to the east, and the tropical moisture won't be an issue just yet for us. And so I think the dew points will start to come down. A couple of decent-ish days, Thursday and Friday, we'll have a veil of clouds. Uh, and we'll have some milky or filtered sunshine, I think. But those will be the pick days of the week, Thursday and Friday. Uh, because, you know, it's kind of muggy outside. It's going to stay uh, pretty muggy through the day. On Wednesday, the dew points will start to come down by Thursday and Friday. Now, here specifically in eastern Ohio and western PA, our weekend forecast will actually be determined what, by what's going on way down here across the Central Caribbean, uh, south of Cuba. This is potential tropical cyclone number nine, soon to be a tropical storm and eventually Hurricane Helene. Uh, it is, you can almost take it to the bank that this is going to become a hurricane and probably a major one as it uh, approaches the panhandle of Florida late this week. So the timing on this, uh, probably a hurricane by Wednesday afternoon at the latest and perhaps a, at least a Category 3 hurricane upon approach to the panhandle of Florida. So anyone with friends or relatives kind of from all oh, extreme southern Alabama, but especially into the panhandle of Florida, all the way perhaps as far east as the Tampa area. Anyone in this cone really needs to pay attention to this over the next uh, couple of days because this could be a major issue with wind and rain and storm surge for the panhandle of Florida especially, uh, particularly on the east side of the circulation, wherever that ends up being. Now for us, our weekend weather will be determined by the remnants of this, where that tracks. If the low kind of curls on the western side of this envelope, we probably stay dry over the weekend. If the remnants of Helene take a little more of an eastward jog like this, we might have to introduce some shower chances into our weekend forecast. Right now, our weekend forecast is a dry one, but it may not stay that way for long. You know, until Helene really starts to get its act together and we see evidence of a low level circulation and organization, the models are not going to be particularly useful this far to the north. They have some use off to the south, but the uncertainty really increases off to the north as to what happens with Helene once it really starts to weaken over land. So if you have outdoor plans this coming weekend, pay attention to forecasts over the next few days because there may or may not be some changes. It's one of those things that we just are, are, you know, we don't like to have low confidence on a forecast for a weekend, only four or five days in advance, but sometimes the weather works out that way and we'll just have to make some uh, adjustments if needed over the next couple of days. So pay attention, stay tuned for those adjustments. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Weather for Weather Geeks this evening. Uh, we'll have uh, the m most details on the weekend forecast and everything else you need to know on future editions of this video this week. And I'll see you right back here on Tuesday.